Basquiat has uh, a timeless wisdom for us is that high levels of government spending and growing government are incompatible with human liberty. And have we ever had that visited upon us since four years ago this winter? Uh, I happen to believe we're in the uh, an historic experiment that is going to discredit Keynesian economics for two or three generations uh, for its manifest failure on every uh, data point and every benchmark that they laid down more four years ago and more to measure their success or failure by it is failed and that notwithstanding the election results that disappointed us from November uh, that will become manifest over time and these kids who voted so heavily for Obama are going to get stuck with the bill. They're getting stuck with it now. And and uh, I don't want to take all morning here and you want to hear from John Brenner, but to me, so much of the battle for our liberty is centered on Obamacare, which I believe to be the greatest invasion of our liberty that probably I've witnessed in my lifetime. By the way, more than 45 years ago, I was growing up in Cape Girardeau, and my dad's best friend was Rush Limbaugh. Yay! And, and uh, I'm talking about the father of the guy on the talk show. And in 1967, Rush Limbaugh Jr. was saying, you boys, I'm 49, about to turn 50 years old, the same age as my dad. And he said, uh, uh, the decisions that govern how my life is going to be lived have been made. But if this continues, this growth of government, you boys are going to live to be slaves, and your children will be slaves. Those words were seared into me when I was in the 6th and 7th and 8th grade, and the lesson took. And so, what, what greater invasion of our liberty can there be than for big government at the federal level to come upon us and visit upon us a top-down bureaucratic approach to health care that comes between us and our doctors and other health care providers uh, and how insidious it spreads in, in what an insidious manner it spread its ten tentacles we've seen it in this legislative session as the various stakeholders or interest groups or incumbent uh, interest groups in health care have one by one been bought off for Obamacare. We saw that in the lobbying process. Big Pharma was bought off. Uh, it's fascinating, though, the, the lobby that's close to us all, because we all have a hospital that we care about, that was bought off. The hospital association was bought off with the Medicaid expansion. Now, I have some friends in Big Pharma who tell me that uh, that four years ago when they were concocting Obamacare and pushing it through and, and murdering the legislative process in D.C. to do it, uh, that all the interest groups, including Big Pharma, stood back and said, wow, the interest group that's getting the best deal here is the hospitals. Why? Because of the Medicaid expansion. Uh, now, so they were all envious of the hospitals. Well, in the in the June last year Supreme Court decision in the Florida case that disappointed us by upholding Obamacare as a tax, which the administration had denied at every point in the 14-month debate that they were doing a tax, then Chief Justice Robert upholds it as a tax. There was one piece of really good news, and that was the Supreme Court said the, the federal government cannot do to the states what they were trying to bludgeon them by saying, if you don't sign up for the Medicaid expansion, you lose all your Medicaid funds. They therefore made the Medicaid expansion possible, and that removed the prop 
under the hospital's uh, best deal of all the groups that were getting bought off on Obamacare. By making the Medicaid expansion, to state my point a little differently, by making it optional for the states, they made it possible for states to resist a key and, and to simply <coughs> refuse to participate in a key part of Obamacare. Likewise with the local state-by-state -state exchanges, uh, insurance exchanges, which we are also refusing to participate in. If you, if you, if we at the state level refuse to participate in those two items, you have disabled a huge chunk of the implementation of Obamacare in, in, in this country. <laughs> notwithstanding the, notwithstanding, and by the way, I'm reliant on Michael Tanner, who has become a friend of mine, a scholar at the Cato Institute. Follow him on Twitter. Follow his his articles. He has one up today on NRO. National Review Online about three years of lies on Obamacare. Uh, now we're in the fourth year of lies. But the lies are being exposed. And there's an AP story out just this morning about gigantic uh, increases in health care premiums. And the states where it's going to be worse are California, Ohio, and maybe New Jersey. I don't remember the other one, but that's on NRO also. I looked at it before I came down here. <coughs> Um, but Michael Tanner has been the one at Cato Institute who, who has been doing a lot of the leading scholarly work on this. Uh, yesterday, this issue hit the floor of the Missouri House of Representatives, and I'm very proud of the result. I don't know how many of you know that an amendment was offered to do the Medicaid expansion, by, I believe, by the minority leader on, in the House. We have 108 Republicans. Uh, and one vacancy that I hope we're going to fill with the Republican in Southwest Missouri next week on Tuesday in Lawrence County, Mike Moon. You need to help Mike Moon in his election next uh, six days from today. And we'll get back to the 109 veto proof. But there were only 50 votes out of 163 for the Medicaid expansion, and, and I believe 104 said no to the Medicaid. You can, you can applaud that. <laughs> There was only one Republican. I won't name him He's from the Kansas City area. Uh, but uh, so your representatives have heard your message loud and clear, and they are under, I want you to know, they're under enormous pressure to do the Medicaid expansion from the hospital lobby. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? The, the hospital lobby has whipsawed every, just about every chamber of commerce in the state of Missouri to support the Medicaid expansion, and they're still saying no. And the answer will be no in the Senate, too. Missouri is not going to do this. Uh, so so that's, that's, that's a huge battle. Now, some of you know that I've launched, uh, I launched Missouri's fight against Obamacare, uh, filed suit at the Rush H. Limbaugh Senior Federal Courthouse in Cape Girardeau against Obamacare, raised the money privately to finance those six-figure lawyer bills myself, because I felt somebody in state government in statewide office, we want to stand up for the rights of Missourians to direct our own health care choices. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, I want to hit on one other subject that one of the audience members, this lady from O'Fallon, asked me about uh, before I take off and you hear from John Brewer. And that is the battle that we've, that's just cropped up uh, early this month. And that's the Department of Revenue driver's license concealed carry endorsement issue on data sharing with the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, I became aware of this uh, the first days of March and aware that we had a friendly fee agent. Please understand the local fee agents, their contract officials, and many of them are not bad actors in this. It's the Department of Revenue and Department of Homeland Security, the feds, where this is coming from. And the PA from the county that we had one in Stoddard County in the Boogie, Dexter in Bloomfield, who was alerting us to what was going on. That a grant apparently had come down from the Department of Homeland Security that expensive new computers and software were being installed office by office, county by county across the state, that it appeared it was to permit 
the sharing of data, uh, not only with the Department of Homeland Security so Janet Napolitano can keep tabs on all of us, but also with a private vendor called the Morpho Trust in Atlanta, Georgia. It's actually a French company, but their American presence, most of it is in Atlanta. This raised all kinds of privacy concerns and not, with, not uh, to mention violations of Missouri law, uh, at least two different sections of our statute, where your elected representatives, after the passage of Real ID in the last decade, said in our statutes, got it signed into law, Missouri is not going to participate in Real ID. So the, I want to give all credit to Russell Oliver. Russ Oliver <coughs> is the prosecuting attorney of Stoddard County. And he filed a civil action, not a criminal action, in his capacity as prosecutor, but as, in his capacity as a private <coughs> attorney, asking Judge Mayer uh, in Stoddard County for a declaratory judgment that as a matter of law, the law was being violated and to issue a temporary restraining order. And the same day he filed that, uh, the first week of March, we got the temporary restraining order against that fee office, that fee agent in Stoddard County. And they have since briefed the matter last week and uh, Russ Oliver is preparing for depositions next week in this matter. Um, <coughs> meanwhile, the alert went out to state legislators and they moved swiftly into action. The House hearing was held. Representative Todd Richardson from Papa Bluff introduced House Bill 787 to state for a third time in our law that <coughs> revenue cannot do this. The Director of Revenue actually came before a House committee and said they weren't sharing data. We think he may have misled that committee. Uh, a few days later, Senator Schaefer from Columbia convened the House to the Senate Appropriations Committee, I believe that was two weeks ago today, and he was so angered at the misrepresentations being made by the director and his deputy director in front of his committee that he angrily gaveled that hearing to a conclusion only a few minutes after it started saying that you've now lied to me twice in three weeks, or three times in two weeks maybe, and I'm going to call you back before, but as for this morning, we're done he said two weeks ago. Uh, Senator Schaefer's level of anger has been rising to the point that on Monday afternoon, right before 5 o'clock, he served a subpoena for documents and all kinds of stuff on the Department of Revenue because he felt they had been lying to him and dragging their heels. And you may have seen that in the news. Although no, to my knowledge, no major newspaper in the state has covered that. We're being, they're training us to go elsewhere for the breaking news of the day. Uh, the Post-Dispatch covered the hearing in which they denied that they're doing this, and then two days, a day later, write, write an editorial attacking me and anyone else who's concerned about this because it's a non-issue. Meanwhile, breaking news we're finding on Facebook, and Twitter, and, and social media, and God bless Dana Lash. Uh, those of you who are outside the St. Louis listing area may not know about this rising conservative media star, <laughs> spelled L-O-E-S-C-H, Lash. Uh, she's a married mother of two boys, and she's uh, appearing on Fox and Hannity and shows like that more often. She's 15 hours a day, 12 to 3, I'm uh, sorry, 15 hours a week, 12 to 3 weekdays on 97.1. FM Talk in St. Louis, where, by the way, she knocked Kennedy to the evening yeah. hours because her, her numbers were stronger. Uh, she sits in for Glenn Beck on, on the blaze, not, uh, not infrequently, and she's a rising conservative media star who met, I think we're about to see on Fox a lot more often. You can listen to her on DanaRadio.com if you're in Timbuktu or <laughs> Barton County. And you're outside the, the reach of her uh, of her uh, radio show in St. Louis, uh, but she may also be about to be nationally syndicated. She has broken this story. Uh, follow her on Twitter. Uh, I'm on Twitter too. I'd love to add you to my 6,500 followers. I try to get the word out on these things, and uh, uh, I'm on Facebook. You can like my fan page there. 
and this battle continues. We're in the early stages of this battle on the Department of Revenue. I don't care what the major newspapers say, I don't care how much they try to ridicule us or dismiss us, this is an issue implicating the vital privacy concerns of Missourians, and for that matter, Americans, mm -hmm. and just let, just like we did on health care, on Obamacare, where we lit the prairie fire with Prop C in 2010, our vote, we're doing it on this issue too, and they're sitting up and taking notice in other states. So I'm proud to be standing with you in this battle for our liberty, and I'd be happy to try to respond to any questions or comments. Yes, sir. What is um, Governor, Governor Nixon's role in all this? Well, that's a very good question. I wrote him a couple of weeks ago, maybe a little more than two weeks ago, asking for a meeting at which we could get some <coughs> through a spokesman. He brushed me off, as he always does. Uh, we're not quitting. Uh, uh, Dana was asking, she had Senator Schaefer on yesterday on her show at 1.30 to discuss uh, his subpoena. And she said, you know, we need answers. Where is the Attorney General? The Attorney General is going to have to get into this lawsuit. He's like Governor Nixon hiding in the tall grass. But his client is the Department of Revenue. Now, Revenue, by the way, is not right now a party to this lawsuit, but they're about to get sucked in one way or another. They are the, they are the real actors. By the way, I'm looking for other plaintiffs to file similar lawsuits. Let's have a dozen of them uh, that Revenue has to defend. Uh, if you know someone about to re-up a driver's license with a concealed carry endorsement or another ID with concealed carry, that what they're doing is scanning your data, your birth certificate, all kinds of other personal data that they don't have any right to have, and God only knows who they're sharing it with and who it's vulnerable to in hacking, right? So there's all kinds of privacy issues. We're trying to get answers, and the governor can hide for a while, but he can't hide forever. Like Trump does, he doesn't have to respond. Well, what is he thinking? Uh, we have ways. Of, uh, by the way, we, there was another thing. There was another thing the legislature did to him yesterday. The House, I believe, Representative again Todd Richardson offered an amendment and docked the DOR budget by one hundred and fifty thousand dollars on this issue. You like that? You, know. you were talking about how they have that French company that's uh, involved in this, and yeah. uh, one of the uh, background backers of that is George Soros. I've heard that. Yeah. I, I'm not an expert on that, but I've heard that. Anyone else? The governor. I'm sorry. The, go ahead. The uh, hospitals in Springfield are instructing, and I'm sure around the state, are instructing their employees to contact their legislators to support the Medicaid expansion. And they have, and those folks have, and I'm just telling you that's part of the full court press. Uh, it's a it's a it's a point of pride and a time to be proud of the conservative lawmakers who are staying true to their conservative commitment made during the election campaign. That doesn't always happen. It's happening this time. Yes, sir. I would think if we wanted to put a stake in the heart of what's going on, because I'm sure it's not just Missouri where this is happening, uh, we, we could find out if, in fact, the governor is complicit in any, in any way and, and, and make a real concerted effort to impeach him. That would get the attention of everybody, and I would be a good thing if we impeached. Well, little steps, little steps for little feet. We have a lot of information together. Let's see what comes back from the subpoena, and, and we'll go. Wait, forward. wait. If yes. he did, would you automatically get bumped up? <laughs> yeah, we're just trying to help you out. Here. <laughs> you, would need, you would need not only impeachment but also removal from office. Well, that, that's the problem, the yeah. finding more. I'm, I'm trying to raise a little private money to finance depositions next week. I'm, I'm talking less than $2,000 to pay Russ Oliver's expenses <coughs> for conducting depositions. So I don't have a blank check to write you to be a plaintiff. Somebody has to. Uh, I'm, I'm talking to the NRA, okay, about their legal defense fund as to whether they might come in with a little help here. We need lawyers who will step forward and file. I have plenty of would-be plaintiffs. I need some lawyers. I need some other heroes like Russ Oliver who stepped out there on his own to do this. 